Hello, and this is Capital TV. This is Capital Cares TV, only on Capital TV. The show that talks CSA. Now, to make a brand the leader in a community, the brand must first serve the community. My name is Adipa Safo, and this is Capital Cares TV. We'll be right back. Hello and welcome back to Capital Cares TV on Capital TV. As the song goes, let's start giving. Now, uh, many, 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 many times, or I should say year in, year out, companies go out there giving out to society, to the community. But the question we are asking is, are they giving out just to feel good or just to look good or they are giving out to actually make a difference in the community. This is what the show is all about. We are going to talk CSR. Why are they giving out? Now, to be able to discuss these issues in depth, I have two very able gentlemen with me who are going to help me answer these questions. Now, my first guest is Byron Nana Taylor. He is a very dynamic man who has a keen interest in CSR. He was the Chief Executive Officer of um, CSR Foundation Ghana. Byron, welcome. You're very welcome. Thank you. My other able gentleman is uh, in the person of Kofi Asari Anyemedu. He is a coordinator, UN Global Compact Ghana. The network provides the platform for companies business associates, UN agencies, NGOs, trade unions, and others to learn about and promote CSR and ethical business standards. Kofi, welcome to Capital Cares TV. Thank you. Now, to start the conversation, I will direct my first question to Kofi. When we talk about CSR, what comes to mind? Okay, thank you so much. Um, it's been broadly defined, but I would start by saying that it basically refers to a business entity working hard to maximize its profit while at the same time working to ensure that its activities do not negatively affect the environment in which it operates, as well as making sure that the people who contribute to the success and growth of that business entity are taken care of. Mm -hmm. I will give two definitions by two institutions that will bring out some of these issues. The first one is a definition given by the International Financial Finance Co Corporation. And they defined it as the commitment of businesses to contribute to sustainable economic development by working with employees, their families, the local community and society at large mm -hmm. to improve their lives in ways that are good for business and development. So it covers all the earlier things I've stated. A second one by the European Commission says that mm -hmm. is the responsibility of an enterprise for the impact on society. So we are saying that the business entity is not out to only maximize profits, but it also operates so that its business, its operations do not negatively affect the environment which supports its existence, as well as the people who are there greatest assets are also taken care of to give back to the growth of the country, the, co the, co the community, the company, as well as the entire thing. Thank you. Um, Byron, he's giving us the definition for CSR. But before I go any further, I want you to tell me, how did CSR come about? Has um, it been there or something prompted it? Historically, we can trace CSR to um, activities of business leaders who after making so much money I mean a story of told about the great American businessmen who Kaniga um, uh, Ford and co after making a lot of money realized that they have to give back to the society so they set up foundations that were able to give back to the society but that that is corporate philanthropy 
and CSR has grown over the years. Mm -hmm. And to add to Kofi's uh, definition, CSR must be systematic and must be planned. And it's an ethical behavior. I mean, people argue about the ethical elements of CSR, but it is very important element that cannot be taken away. So it firstly must be planned, it must be sustained, it must be systematic, and then it must be ethical. Okay. Then, does it mean that CSR is equal to corporate philanthropy? No, no. From, from what I am saying, it means that CSR goes beyond um, philanthropy. Philanthropy, yes, it is one of the issues that we have in CSR. But corporate social responsibility goes beyond um, corporate philanthropy. We can, we can talk about so many issues when it comes to um, CSR. And as the definition says, and there are other definitions that even says that the organized business organization must, must meet its um, statutory and regulatory requirements and go beyond that requirement. Mm -hmm. So if, if philanthropy is going beyond that requirement, then it's a CSR. But then there are other issues, the health of your, your, your uh, employees, um, the community in which you're operating, yeah. um, and corruption. Corruption is, is a key CSR issue. Human rights, there is another story about um, a business entity that, that used their contributions in the in the community in South Africa. They withdrew their business because they felt apartheid was wrong. Mm -hmm. And that is one of the basics in human rights when it comes to CSR. So you, 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 you would agree with me that giving in the name of philanthropy yeah. is good. I mean, and you cannot take the fact away that philanthropy is, is CSR. Mm -hmm. It's part of CSR or it's one of the key issues in CSR. But equating CSR to philanthropy is, is getting it wrong. Kofi, earlier in his submission, he said that when it comes to the history of CSR, uh, big organizations realized that they made so much money sure. decided to give yeah. back. Now, in this case, what happens if the organizations don't make profit? So that's why I was saying earlier on, you really need to appreciate and understand what it is. It's not only about making profit. You need profit to stay in business. But then there's the internal aspect and also the external. So, so once you take care of the internal, you can confidently go out and do... I always say charity begins at home. Yeah. You start within. Put a number of things in, in place. Increase productivity. Put in place a number of systems that would make sure that you effectively do things. Cut down on a number of things. Bring in innovative things that will make sure that you, you, you operate while making something. Then you could effectively give out something. So, so you shouldn't wait to make profit before you do good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You should put things in place so that the year in and year out you'll be doing a number of things that will ensure that you stay in business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. to, to, so to, to add to Kofi, Kof um, you, if you understand CSR and where it is going, you would then know that you need to integrate CSR into your core business itself. Mm -hmm. There, you treat CSR as part of cost. So you, you don't make profit and then start thinking about CSR. But CSR is in the process of you making your profit. So you, you, you understand where, I so when, when you start doing that, then you don't wait and think of CSR as something that comes after, after profit, and then it becomes philanthropy yeah. then. Yeah. Okay. I, uh, I think I should let my, my viewers understand what CSR is. I started by mentioning CSR. Yeah. CSR, as we are talking about, is corporate social responsibility. The short form is CSR. Now, Byron, this debate going on about CSR being mandatory or voluntary, what is your stand? Very interesting. And thank you for um, explaining CSR. I mean, we are too involved with the concept for a long time. We, we take it for granted that if yeah. you say CSR, yeah. everybody knows CSR. But, uh, so before you continue, he's going to give me his point mm. or his 
his uh, position on sure. that debate, and you would also give me your position. Okay, okay thank you. Um, very interesting, very interesting. And I always admit when this question is being asked, because when I initially started my research on CSR, and I'm very passionate about development issues of Africa, so then I thought that business has a huge role to play in the development of Africa. So uh, if we have a way of mandating business to contribute to development, then maybe it is, it is okay. But reading on further, I think that that idea wasn't the right um, um, thinking. CSR um, should be a voluntary um, exercise by, by organizations. And, and um, by voluntary, um, you, you willingly contribute to yeah. development, as, as, as we, we want to put it. And the reason why I felt de development forms the basis for, for CSR to be man mandatory has now changed because I think there is an opportunity for partnership. And that aspect of partnership would solve the problem of what role businesses can play to partner governments and civil society mm -hmm. to, to help in sustainable development of the continent. Mm -hmm. So partnership for me is more key than mandating organizations to, 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 to contribute to society. There's a danger there in, uh, too also because um, if you say CSR is mandatory, so what are we going to say to business? At the end of the, uh, the year, mm -hmm. give what, 200 million as your CSR? Yeah to the community or to, to, to government, central government. But, I mean, there are organizations there who are doing a lot of things to contribute. Mm -hmm. And if you say, this is what I expect you to do, and they do do that, they are not going to go beyond what they can do. So what the, it is expected from them. But if you leave it, and then it is, and I always, it, it is a matter of conscience, it's a matter of ethics, and it's a matter of good thinking. If the business feels that there are core issues in the communities they operate and they will want to contribute, I think there should be there should be um, the leeway for them to do. And there are there are organizations and there are key um, guidelines that mm -hmm. could help the organizations. But for it to be mandatory, I, I I personally, after a lot of research and looking around, I, I think CSR should be should be a, a voluntary a exercise. Voluntary yeah. exercise. Kofi, what is your take on that? Yeah, I, I, I personally agree with, with what he said. Um, making it mandatory has this negative part. Because a company could just restrict itself to the barest minimum to meet the law. Mm -hmm. And that will be it. Yeah. So I also support what he put forward, that we should make it voluntary. Making it voluntary gives companies the, the, the ability to also be more innovative. Mm -hmm. And we need innovations to drive this forward. Yeah. We need innovations to go beyond what the law stipulates. There, there could be, what I'll call for is, we should have guidelines, mm -hmm. a framework within which companies can operate. But in terms of its actual implementation, in terms of the actual rollout, it should be voluntary. You said something about guidelines laws and policies when we come back from the break that we're going to we will touch on the role government is playing and if there are any policies at all we'll go for a commercial break and when we come back we'll touch on all these that i've just mentioned we'll be right back Welcome back to Capital Cares TV, only on Capital TV. As you are well aware, we were discussing corporate social responsibility, CSR for short, and uh, we're talking about the fundamentals of CSR. What is CSR? Why are companies so interested in CSR? Before we went for the break, I announced that when we come back, we are going to talk about the role government plays in CSR. 
I have this question mm -hmm. on the role government is playing on CSR. But then I will direct it to Byron, and then after that, I would like you to tell us what is the difference between CSR and CSI? Byron, what is the role government is playing in CSR? Um, obviously, and from my orientation, you know, I, I always like to link CSR to development. I mean, mm -hmm. sustainable development, and that's the right word to use when it comes to corporate social responsibility. So, um, the agenda of governance is to develop. Mm -hmm. So if you have a key partner, which is business that is helping you to develop, there are things that you have to put in place. You have to create the enabling environment. It's one, it is key. Also, um, there is a key issue in CSR, which is a legal, legal requ requisite. When I was talk talking about definition, I, 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 I mentioned the planned nature, the system systematic nature, the ethical nature, and then going beyond your uh, regulatory and then statutory requirements. Those regulatory and statutory requirements are set by government. Mm -hmm. So government need, the role government need to play in CSR is for them, is for government to institute the right laws and policies for corporate bodies to adhere to. That's the first step for me in the CSR framework. Mm -hmm. So government has a key role by firstly holding corporate bodies accountable to the legal um, requisites that they are supposed to meet in the country. So we need to set the right laws. And in Ghana, we, we continue to say we have a lot of laws. One, one of the key issues is the enforcement. So we need to initiate the right laws and policies, both at the national and then local level, and then we need to enforce. And also there should be checks on those people who enforce. Otherwise, I mean, the issue of corruption comes in and people do not check. Uh, organizations are supposed to do environmental assess impact assessment, mm -hmm. but you, you have people at the local level going to do all kinds of things and give mm -hmm. their reports and because there's no follow-up, then um, the community gets shortchanged yes. environmentally and all that. So it is important. Government has a key key role to play in, in the CSR framework. Okay, before I go to the issue of CSR and CSI, I want us to find out, okay, the government is playing these roles. Now, when it comes to the organization, the organization that is handling the projects, how is the issue of corruption managed? Yeah, so it, 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 it depends on how you want to look at it. I would look at a number of things. Um, the business entity needs to put a number of structures in place mm -hmm. to help it remain transparent to be able to undertake the activity. Yeah. So there are laws that we are all required to, 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 to meet in Ghana. Yes. Right. As a business entity, there are certain things annually you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to communicate to your shareholders how well you've been able to effect whatever you set out to do. Mm -hmm. Right. So as a business entity, it is required for you to put a number of measures in place to ensure that you do not do anything that would go against whatever you set out to do. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you put in place mechanisms that would ensure that the people who are handling their resources remain transparent, are very accountable. Every penny is used for the purpose for which it's supposed to be useful mm -hmm. and then you put in place a mechanism to ensure that at every time every, every point in time you are monitoring how it's being used what indeed are the impacts and where there are challenges you put in remedies to address these things once you're able to do that once you're able to in involve so many people in the implementation it minimizes some of these things because if you leave it to only an individual, then there's a risk of yeah. the person being corrupt. Mm -hmm. Because there would be the, 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 the absence of that supervisory or oversight responsibility. So once these mechanisms are put in place and you run through the entire thing, it minimizes some of these things. Um, the Global Compact, for example, brings in its 10th principle, talks about anti-corruption. Yeah. And it brings in issues such as bribery, extortion, etc. It's saying that 
how long, how sustainable are these things? Would you always bribe your way to achieve what you want to do? Mm -hmm. Does that make you competitive? Mm -hmm. In the short term, you might say yes, but how long can you continue? Can you bribe your way for the next 10 years? Is that sustainable? You wouldn't want to go that way. It is better to do business right, to do clean business. It has its positives. And we encourage people to be as transparent as possible. Okay. To, okay. To, 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 can I add a little to what you Kofi can. is saying? Um, taking care of corruption internally um, is also another key issue in corporate social responsibility is the issue of co corporate okay. governance. Yeah. So um, internally, you should be able to put in structures, structures. That, that would align or outline how expenditure is made at, at the smallest level to the highest level. Yeah. Uh, uh, the accountants will tell you there should, there should be a paper trail for everything. So it is, it is very key that whilst you are de dealing with the internal issues, uh, the external issues that people know about, and when, when, whenever CSR is corporate social responsibility is mentioned, they think it's external. external. But then there are key issues internally mm -hmm. that has to be taken care, uh, care of. And corporate governance is one of the key things that will check the ethical behavior in the organization internally. So you do your homework from in-house before you take it outside. The time has been so short. We have a lot of issues that we should have covered, but I want to plead with my viewers that due to time constraints, we'll continue this topic, God willing, next week with my guests, Byron Anna Taylor and Kofi Asari Anyamedu. Thank you for staying with us. God willing, next week, same time, same place. Meet us here on Capital Cares TV, only on Capital TV. This is the show, as I will keep on saying, that talks CSR. Let's start giving. Have a blessed evening.